Hello everyone. Welcome to the Environmental Finance Center's Grease Trap Inspection Demonstration Video. Today we are joined by Nick, a Pollution Prevention Specialist with the Albuquerque Bernalillo County Water Utility Authority, who will be showing us the components of a grease trap and demonstrate how he performs grease trap inspections. Grease traps, which are also known as grease interceptors and grease removal systems, are plumbing devices installed by food service establishments to capture fats, oils, and grease, which we refer to as fog, which may be present in the wastewater that food service establishments create before it enters the collection system. Fog is known to build up and combine with other debris in the collection system and can even grow into giant fat birds. Grease traps are a useful tool, along with proper best management practices, that systems of all sizes can use to prevent clogs or blockages caused by fog and prevent sanitary sewer overflows and protect their infrastructure. Before we get under some manholes and dive into the grease traps, let's talk about safety and equipment. Grease traps come in a variety of shapes and sizes, so it is important for a good grease trap inspector to have a variety of tools available to them to safely and efficiently access these devices. This should include a sledgehammer to loosen stubborn manholes, multiple manhole picks, a strong flashlight, large Allen wrenches, screwdrivers, safety equipment, and anything else you may find useful. To protect themselves, grease trap inspectors should also utilize typical wastewater PPE, such as hard-toed shoes, rubber gloves, protective leather gloves, a hard hat, and a safety vest. Now that we've covered the basics, let's look under the cover and discuss some of the components of a grease trap. Fog is less dense than water, so grease traps are designed to slow down wastewater as it passes through the device, which allows fog to collect at the surface where it can be removed later, and the rest of the wastewater to continue into the collection system. Grease traps are typically large tanks or boxes installed directly in the ground or under sinks. The first component of a traditional grease trap design is the inlet pipe, which allows water collected in kitchen sinks to enter the grease trap. The inlet pipe is typically equipped with a flow control device that regulates the rate at which water enters the grease trap to ensure the device is not overwhelmed. The flow then encounters a baffle wall that slows down the flow of water and creates the first chamber of the grease trap where the wastewater can first begin to cool and allow fog to rise to the surface and heavier solids to sink to the bottom. The water will then pass into the baffle wall or throw a transfer tee to the second chamber where further separation occurs. Finally, the water will pass through an outlet tee, which is positioned to allow water separated from the fog to leave the device at a lower level than the collected fog. The outlet device should be designed with an opening that you can see into to determine the condition of the wastewater before it is discharged into the collection system. Water leaving a grease trap should be free of fog, other solids, and an observable oil sheen. Grease traps should also be equipped with cleanouts on the inlet and outlet pipes to allow for the effective maintenance and release the buildup of sewer gases. A well designed grease trap will have most of these components visible when opening the grease trap lid or manhole, which is exactly what we will do to demonstrate our grease trap inspection. First, Nick will use a manhole pick to slowly pull all components of the lid away from the hole, positioning his body so his body is moving away from the hole and never over it. The lid should be safely secured to the side of the hole where it is not a hazard to the inspector or nearby traffic it should not be hanging over the hole at all. As you can see here, this grease trap's actual cover is located below the surface and must be carefully removed with a small crowbar. This type of grease trap is considered a small hydromechanical grease trap and is made of metal. Once all of the covers are removed, we can now clearly see the inlet, the first and second baffle walls, and the outlet. This outlet is equipped with a removable plug that can be removed to assess the condition of the grease trap and the outflowing water. Nick uses a probe to feel around 
for unwanted solid buildup and then taps the baffle wall to ensure it is intact. It is important to establish the integrity of these components as metal and concrete grease traps are known to corrode. As you can see, the water in this grease trap is relatively clean, indicating it is not past its capacity and therefore easy to determine it is in compliance. Next, we will assess the condition of a grease trap that is subjected to more usage. Our next example grease trap is considered a large gravity grease interceptor and is made of concrete. These are usually installed in parking spaces, nearby landscaping, or sometimes drive-throughs, and are equipped with two manhole lids to see both chambers of the grease interceptor. Because this device is located in a parking lot, it's important to deploy safety cones to indicate there is a safety hazard present. To inspect this device, Nick will again carefully remove the manhole lids to properly inspect the grease trap. Below the first manhole is the first chamber of the grease trap and the inlet piping. The opening at the top of the pipe allows us to see the condition of the influent wastewater. As you can see here, the fog in this section of the grease trap is a combination of liquid fog that is cooling down and some solid fog. The second manhole reveals the first baffle wall and the connecting pipe, which also has a hole at the top that allows us to see the condition of the water passing from the first chamber to the second. The fog in the second chamber is white and appears more solid as a result of having more time in the grease trap to cool and float to the top. Similar to the small grease trap, Nick will utilize a probing stick to assess the fog of the large grease trap. The traditional industry standard suggests the contents of a compliant grease trap should be made up of 25% or less of fog. This can be assessed with a probing stick or a clear tube device known as a core sampler. While the 25% rule is used throughout the industry, it can be subjective. So inspectors should err on the side of caution and recommend grease traps be pumped if they think they are borderline past the 25% limit. To assess the grease in the first chamber, Nick inserts the probe into the grease trap as straight as possible, perpendicular to the surface, until he feels it touch the bottom. He will tap the probe along the baffle wall to ensure there are no missing sections, and then hold the probe submerged for a short time. This allows fog to accumulate on the probe and gives an idea of how deep the fog layer goes. He will then remove the probe and clean any fog stuck to the probe. He will then reinsert the probe into the transfer pipe on the baffle wall, again probing to make sure the connection pipe is intact. As he removes the probe, you can see that there is very little fog clinging to the probe and mostly water dripping off of it, which indicates the grease trap is working correctly and very little fog is passing onto the second chamber and in turn the collection system. The last type of grease trap we need to mention is the large hydromechanical grease trap. This particular grease trap type is designed with proprietary technology that is not easily visible when in operation. To properly assess these devices, inspectors should be familiar with the individual technology and manufacturer and it is best to inspect these devices when they are completely empty to verify the components are intact. The benefit of these type of devices is that they are typically third-party verified to operate properly with a grease capacity of 90% or more, unlike the traditional grease traps we observed earlier, which are limited to the 25% rule. With our last example, that brings our grease trap tour to an end. We hope you found this video useful and please join us next time for more educational content.